Nine out of 10 students I was coaching this week were really struggling with their chip shots around the green, particularly if the ball was nestled in deep rough and they had to play a delicate shot. What they would actually do is either fat it or thin it. They just didn't know how to play it. So they all had different problems. So in this video, what I'm gonna share with you is five simple things that you can do to improve your chipping strike, your chipping consistency, and your distance control from any lie. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play all these shots from a real shocking lie, just to prove to you that this technique works from everywhere. So let's get started with tip number one. So before we go into the actual technique, you know, nobody sets up correctly. The amount of times that people are struggling with their chipping and they've actually got a reasonable action. The problem is, is they're striking it poorly simply because they don't put their body in the right place. Now, the first thing I want you to do is, is get fairly narrow, get also a little bit closer, almost crowd the ball a little bit here. This is not a proper swing, right? We want the club to be falling down on the ball. We don't want to have this great big arc, which is going to be created if your club's out here. So get a bit closer and turn your lead foot out here so that you can, you've got some space look to come through but then the most important bit we want this club to be dropping beautifully down underneath the golf ball here now a lot of people realize they've got to get their weight forward but they do it incorrectly they push forward now are you doing this are you pushing forward because when you push forward and lean back suddenly the shoulders get too much of a tilt now we're in a position here to hit up on the ball too much we can't fat it we might thin it okay so when you get your lead uh, when you put your weight forward literally stack the middle of your shoulders over your hips here, okay, so you're directly on top, and this levels out the shoulders. Now what happens, look, when I let the club fall now, the, I can almost guarantee that the club's gonna fall exactly where that ball is, and that's what you need for a great strike. So, tip number one, make sure you're in a great setup position so you can start striking those chip shots. Tip number two, use the golf club as more of a counterbalance through impact. Don't drive the handle towards the golf ball. Now, this is a problem that I personally had. When the ball was buried, okay, I would find myself trying to, I wanna strike it. So I would actually go at the golf ball like this, but I would drive my handles instinctively towards the ball. This de-lofts the club. Now, if I did strike the ball, it would go way too far. So then naturally, I'd see it going too far, I'd start to get nervy and a bit yippy with these. I see this so many times with many, many of my students. So we need to get a sense of using, rather than driving the handle, allowing the club to slip under the golf ball. Now, what I want you to use is, imagine this butt end here, working almost like the letter L. So here, look, I'm, the club is slipping under the ball, I'm keeping, the club loft on it all of the time. How does this apply to the swing? Well, I had to get rid of the instinct to hit at and trust that I'd get the club literally sliding under the golf ball and the butt end here look working in a letter L up and back and that allows the club look to slip underneath. What it's actually doing or the feeling I had, and this is this club's gonna show you, is the, sh the club shaft unloads through impact as opposed to loads like this, then snaps back. So unloading is this way. That is what's gonna get the loft on the golf club. So as soon as I got that sensation and trusted it, I started to get the balls popping up. So let's have a look at this in action. So same thing, get myself set here, I'm in that same setup position, and all I'm gonna get a sense of here, and tip three is gonna really enhance this, I'll go into that in a second, is get the sense of the club look going slipping under by this butt working up in the letter L shaped here. That gives me space look to slip the loft under as opposed to drive and get it going too far. Let's have a look at this in action. Now you'll see here, I've slipped the ball beautifully under the golf ball, but it's gone to the right, which brings in tip number three. So it's great, you've now got the idea of this counterbalance weight of the club working underneath the golf ball, but this could be just waving all over the place. So you need to be able to control it somehow. And secondly, you need to recognize that the club works on an arc. And if I just did this, like I did there, yes, I might get some half decent strikes, but the ball's gonna be off direction. We need to get the club working on an arc. Bring in tip number three, using the trail arm to help you generate a beautiful pivot in the body, this is super, super important. So what I want you to do is you've got your setup now, take your trail arm, use the uh, bicep, and just turn it inwards towards your body. Hold it now in, uh, in your trail arm, and all I'm gonna do here is this. I'm gonna keep that bicep turned this way, swing back in a little pivot, and I'm gonna pivot through here, 
and feel notice how I'm standing up a little bit whilst I'm pivoting through. What this is doing is it's helping the club naturally swing on, a, on an arc by having them bicep turned in once it's keeping the loft on the club. Often I see with the golfers here is, is they might get this kind of pendulum, but they're doing it in a really uncontrolled way like this. You'll never strike it consistently. You'll never get distance control. So once you've got that kind of sensation, you've got your destination, notice how much taller I am here, okay? Now you've got an idea of, okay, that's what I am trying to do. So I'm getting the feeling of the club working in this L shape here, bottoming out underneath the golf ball while simultaneously controlling it now with a beautiful pivot okay clean the face so i can get some back spin or a little bit of spin even out of this thick rough okay and let's have a look at this in action there we go okay so much much more controlled i've now got a destination that i'm going to i've now got a pivot i'm letting the club just fall underneath Let's now move on to tip number four, which is really, really crucial if you want to get that distance control. So tip number four is all about distance control and, and feel. And you've put those first three uh, phases in place. You're starting to build a little bit of confidence up. But this is what you'll see with any great player. You'll see a lovely rhythm and speed to, and confidence to their action. And the, what makes it look that way, okay, compared to the yippy knee motion that you see with a lot of other people, is, is they really allow the club head to flow through the, underneath the ball, and they do that by actually stopping their hands after impact fairly briskly, okay? Now, you see here, if I start to still get the pivot, but stop my hands briskly, the club will accelerate through underneath the golf ball, which is great when you're coming out of the rough. Now. All you've got to do, this just comes with a bit of practice and a bit of feel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get myself set up. I've got the pivot and I'm going to imagine the club stopping, or sorry, the hand stopping a little bit quicker here, close to my lead pocket. If I've driven at the golf ball, they'll end up too far away. If I just imagine keeping them nice and close, that will automatically get a bit more acceleration in that club head. Okay, just like that. Now let me put the final ingredient to this so you can take it out to the golf course with tip number five. So if you're finding these tips useful, consider subscribing. I release videos just like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, I'll pin in the top comments a free practice plan that you can access showing you step by step how to do this. Just watch it, take it home, do whatever you want with it. But now let's move on to tip number five. So tip number five is the glue that holds this all together. You need a rhythm to your chipping action and that rhythm comes from your routine. I want you to look at the rhythm of this. I get to the golf ball, I have practice swings, working on that sensation, but then notice this. I'm gonna put the club behind the ball. I'm looking at my landing spot, just two or three feet onto the green, get myself set, one, two, and follow through. <sighs> pretty good okay now I've noticed the rhythm in this motion okay I want you to start to add that to your action it's not kind of standing over here thinking of a million things I want the rhythm club behind one two and follow through simple as that yes got to work on a little bit of accuracy but get that rhythm into your action so if you love this video and you'd like to see some of these things in action with a real student, a proper student, even a beginner a player, making tough lies look easy, check this lesson out right here. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, come and join the community by pressing this button right here. But until next week, have a great golfing week.